Good morning, Year 8. Welcome to another lesson on Dickensian characters. This is another one that you might have heard of uh, called The Artful Dodger. Um, but before we get into that, I want you to do the do now. Uh, look at the uh, picture there, the engraving. What impression do you have of the boy standing talking to Oliver? What does his name re reveal about his lifestyle? Just write a quick paragraph there and then on to the next slide. Our uh, learning objective today is to meet the Artful do Dodger and we're going to learn a bit about juvenile crime. We're also going to write a newspaper article. So the uh, title is The Artful Dodger and Juvenile Crime. OK, this is a, a description of uh, the Artful Dodger when he first meets Oliver. The boy was about his own age, but one of the queerest looking boys that Oliver had ever seen. He was a snub nosed, flat browed, common faced boy enough and as dirty a juvenile as one would wish to see, but he had him about him all the airs and manners of a man. He was short of his age, with rather bow legs and little sharp, ugly eyes. His hat was stuck on the top of his head so lightly that it threatened to fall off every moment, and would have done so very often if the wearer had not a knack of every now and then giving his head a sudden twitch, which brought it back to its old place again. He wore a man's coat, which reached nearly to his heels. He had turned the cuffs back halfway up his arm, to get his hands out of the sleeves, apparently with the ultimated view of thrusting them into the pockets of his corduroy trousers, for there he kept them. He was, altogether, as roistering and swaggering a young gentleman as ever stood four feet six, or something else, in the bleachers. There's a couple of questions at the top there. What evidence is there that he lives roughly? What's, what's, what's odd about his clothing and his, clothing and his manner? So you can uh, copy those uh, responses into your books, please. You don't need to write any of this down. Just uh, pay attention, and we'll, you'll get um, you'll get a, an idea of Oliver of the Artful Dodger and what role he plays. The Artful Dodger is one of the child criminals in a gang led by Fagin. Fagin is a miser. He's a miser and a thief who teaches children to make their livings by pickpocketing and other criminal activities in exchange for shelter. He is a violent man who punishes the children when they return from their day's work empty-handed. Fagin recognised the Artful Dodger's talents and calls him his best hand. We first meet the Artful Dodger soon after Oliver has arrived in London after running away from Mr Sowbury. Mr Sowbury was the man who bought Oliver from the workhouse after they sold him for asking for more gruel. The Artful Dodger approaches Oliver and persuades him to come back to the gang's base. Fagin then enlists Oliver into the gang and gets the Artful Dodger and his friend Charlie Bates to teach Oliver how to steal. Why do you think Jack is called the Artful Dodger? Why is he described by Fagin, the head of the criminal gang, gang as his best hand? I don't want you to spend uh, ages on this. He's called the Artful Dodger, as I'm sure you've worked out, and Fagin's best hand because he's the best at pickpocketing, which is one of the ways the gang made their money. Now you need to uh, read the extract and then answer those questions there. Um, why was Oliver the one being chased? What did the Artful Dodger and Charlie do to when they saw Oliver being chased? What makes Oliver fall down? What is the attitude of people chasing and catching Oliver? Find evidence from the text to support your answer. And do you think this was an appropriate reaction to a street theft? Why, why not? That'll take you 15 minutes to answer those. Well, here are the answers. I hope you've got this or something like it. I won't read all that out. OK, here's a bit of background on juvenile crime and how these gangs like Fagin, um, who runs this gang and the Artful Dodger, <coughs> um, came about. Youth crime had been a concern since the 1700s. However, since a decline in apprenticeships and as a result of industrial, uh, industrialisation disrupting families, criminal gangs of boys and girls made youth crime a rising concern in the 19th century. Evidence from courts and newspaper articles suggests that juvenile crime was a serious problem at the time Dickens was writing Oliver Twist. Picking of pockets was especially common, particularly the theft of silk handkerchiefs. Crowded places such as fairs, marketplaces and public executions were particularly profitable for young thieves. The treatment of juvenile criminals in the 19th century was harsh. After 1800, children between the ages of 7 and 14 were considered incapable of forming criminal intentions, but they could still be found guilty. 
In theory, children convicted of serious felonies therefore face the full penalty of, of the law, namely sentences of imprisonment, transportation and death. Death sentences for girls and boys under 16 years of age were in practice usually commuted to transportation. By the 1830s, each year around 5,000 prisoners, some of whom were as young as 10, were carried by ship to penal colonies in Australia to serve sentences of 7 or 14 years and occasionally life. Alternative punishment options were regularly used to deal with child criminals. Whipping or flogging, for example, was frequently used until the end of the century. Jail was an appropriate punishment for children caught stealing. Do you agree with that? Do you think these children should have been uh, dealt with in some other way? Don't worry about writing anything down. Just have a think about it. Do you think publicly flogging, that's, you know, with a whip, a 10 year old child for stealing a silk handkerchief is the way to go or do you think um, it should be dealt with in some other way? Here's the task or it was task three but this is the one that I want you to upload onto uh, class charts. Dickens was a social campaigner that means he he tried to make the world a better place all of his books not all but 90% of his books are about um, people living in terrible conditions being forced to behave in terrible ways simply because they had no choice. All of his characters, even somebody, you know, I would argue, even somebody like Fagin, who is the chap who runs this squad of um, child pickpockets, is to some degree um, sympathetic in that, that, you know, he probably he hasn't had any other choices in life. And this is where the, the, the way that the world is at that time has, has, has placed him. And this is what Dickens wanted to change. He wanted to change how the world was run so people didn't find themselves in these terrible positions where they had to steal and manipulate other people. So he was a social campaigner as well as a successful novel novelist. In addition to highlighting social issues through his novels, he made speeches and wrote letters on all sorts of social justice issues from public executions to child labour. Yes, they still had public ex executions in Dickens' time. You could take your family along to watch somebody being hung. Imagine you find out about a child as young as Oliver being arrested and sentenced to jail for petty theft. Now, your task is this. Write a letter of protest to the government or to a national newspaper. Propose a better solution. So there you are. You've got to write a letter of protest to the government saying, why is this happening to this young man? He's barely started out in his life. He needs support not to be punished. And then you've got to offer a solution in your letter as well. So that should be at least half a page long, year eight, you know, ideally more. Um, and I look forward to reading it. Um, thank you for that. And I shall speak to you tomorrow.